Uh, the BJP is a winner in the recent assembly elections over the weekend. And uh, remember, the BJP, of course, has come tantalizingly close to a majority of Shiv Sena, a distant second. Uh, the Congress and NCP, of course, suffering quite a big defeat. The verdict was a lot more clear-cut in Haryana. Uh, the BJP got a simple majority there with 47 out of the 90 uh, constituencies. The Om Prakash Chotala led Indian National Lok Dal uh, came in second. And the Congress, which was in power for the last 10 years, came in a disappointing third. All right, now the picture in Marasha isn't uh, completely clear yet, uh, but to discuss that uh, further, we've got uh, uh, Rohit Prasad, Associate Professor of Economics at uh, Management Development Institute, joining us this morning. Uh, Rohit, uh, you know, before we get to uh, what the likely uh, uh, combinations could be in Maharashtra, I just want to get a reaction for you on the fact that this election result in itself is historic, not only because it has clearly brought in a single party rule, uh, but also because it's laid an end to dynastic politics, at least for now. Yes, in many ways, uh, this is uh, historic. Uh, the BJP has, uh, for the first time, established a strong presence in Haryana. Uh, they have emerged in their own right in Maharashtra. They always were the second, uh, second fiddle in the combination with Shiv Sena, and now they have actually uh, strongly actually established their dominance. Um, the uh, dominance of the Congress in, in Maharashtra and in Haryana is uh, at risk. So in many ways, this election is a game changer in the state. And uh, it uh, could be an important game changer at the national level, both from a politics point of view as well as from an economics point of view, because it indicates that the political momentum during of the uh, BJP, which was uh, evident during the Lok Sabha election, appears to be continuing. It had appeared to be stuttering during the by-elections, but I think they have recreated uh, the, the momentum. And uh, so in many ways, this is a historic election, uh, both from the point of view of politics and uh, from the point of view of economics and uh, of what lies ahead. You know, Rohit, that, that's exactly the point that I want to actually focus on when we talk about the economic angle to it because that, that, that's, what, that's what the markets are going to be focusing today. The SGX Nifty already before, ahead of the market's opening is already seeing that little bit of excitement. Take us to us to what kind of implications, what kind of move could we actually see because we've already seen some of the big ticket reforms being announced, diesel deregulation over the weekend also coming in simultaneously with the BJP win. So from the economic angle, what can we expect? Uh, I think let's just get a couple of things clear here. One is that as far as economic policy is concerned, there is not that much difference between the UPA and the NDA. Uh, the diesel deregulation that people talk about started in uh, January 2013 when uh, the UPA decided to increase the uh, price of diesel by 50 pesos uh, a liter per month at the time when the diesel prices were trailing uh, the international prices by about 10 rupees. So if we had followed that time, uh, that calendar, we would have been at uh, parity with world prices around now. So uh, in that sense, uh, not just in terms of diesel, but overall, the approach of both the UPA and the NDA towards growth is very much similar where uh, we are going to see a difference is in two respects. One is in terms of the ability to convert policy into outcomes. Hopefully that will improve. Uh, and the second is in terms of a certain sense of optimism and hope that is undoubtedly uh, pervading the economy today. And uh, which as Keynes told us when he talked about animal spirits uh, makes an important difference to economic outcomes. So uh, I think that uh, uh, these, are, uh, these are good signs. My concern with the economy, if I may say so, uh, lies not in terms of its uh, growth, but in terms of uh, the ability to uh, have an inclusive growth. I'm sorry to use that rather hackneyed term, but uh, when I see things like uh, the Narega being rolled back, then, or, or talk of the Narega being rolled back, then I start to worry in an economy where 90% of the uh, of the labor force is in the unorganized sector, and right. most 
of the unorganized sector is in, uh, is in shambles as far right. as labor conditions are concerned.